Welcome back to Unity Principles. This is a series where I go through the reasons behind coding in Unity. I'll explain the why of programming games. This is me. I go by Board Mormon on the forums. Look me up. As you can see, I'm a coder, not an artist. In this episode, I'm going to talk about communicating between scripts. This is one of the most commonly asked questions from new users in the community. Let's start with an example. Let's start with a very simple shooter. We make a script for a gun. The gun has a bullet. The gun needs to communicate information to the bullet. Maybe a starting velocity or a direction. Maybe which player shot it. The bullet then hits a target. It needs to communicate to the life script on the target what's happening. How much damage do they do? Whether they hit it? Now let's imagine the target is killed. The life script needs to communicate this to the death script. This plays a death animation. Maybe we want to update the score. So this death script has to communicate to the score script. Even in our very simple example, we've came across several instances where we'll need to communicate between scripts. In this episode, I'm going to talk about direct communication. This is not the only way to communicate between scripts. It's not even the best way to communicate between scripts in all cases. But it's the simplest way. And learning the simple ways first is always good. Direct communication between scripts is a three-step process. The first step is to get a reference to the game object that owns the component you wish to access. There are a ton of ways to do this. I'll share some of them. Feel free to post others in the comments. Keeping a reference when instantiating a game object is a good idea. In the case of the gun and the bullet, the bullet is normally created by the gun. So the gun simply needs to hang on to that reference until it is done with it. Collisions are another great way to get a reference. Unity provides collision data in any of the onCollision methods. Collider data is provided in the onTrigger methods. This data includes a reference to the applicable game object. Our bullet would get a reference to our life script in this manner. If you know the component you want to use is on a particular parent or child of the game object, you can use the various transform methods to climb up or down the hierarchy. This is even easier if you know the script is on the same game object. Like might be expected if you were to use requires component. And if you're really desperate, you can use one of the find methods. These get a little bit of a bad rap because they're relatively slow. But relatively slow is not that slow. If you cache the results, they'll work out fine. Once you have the game object reference, the rest is pretty simple. Call get component on the game object to get the script of interest. The result should be cached if you're going to use this a lot. Calling get component doesn't take a lot of time, but if you're going to call it thousands of times every update, it will kill your frame rate. Accessing the member of interest from here is as simple as using the dot operator. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, comment below. Share it with your friends or on the forums. If you think I'm wrong, the comments are also a great place to share that too. And look out for my soon to be released asset trend me on the asset store. It's a great little debugging tool. It's a great little debugging tool. You can attach the trender to any float on any component and track it in real time. You can also export to Excel as well. Thanks for watching.